Hello everybody, it is Tuesday and we're here on Facebook Live, so that's great. It is a beautiful day here in Alberta. We've had a little bit of rain, now there's a little bit of sun. Um, what's it doing in your neck of the woods? So if you are new to me and you have never attended one of our uh, free paper crafting classes, welcome. My name is Joanne Rogers. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Central Alberta, Canada, and I've been designing with you in mind since 1999. And today we are going to be playing with heat embossing, white heat embossing, so white embossing powder, uh, creating just a really clean look and just throwing in a little bit of color. But we're using the Cheerful Daisies bundle, which has been a super popular bundle so far. It's on the front of our new annual catalog and it's one of our collections. But we're using the bundle today, not the collection, the entire collection itself. So oh, I always ask a question. It wasn't just where are you watching from, but the question I want to ask you today is I'm getting ready and prepared to go on the Stampin' Up! cruise when, and we leave next Friday the 19th of May. And so my question for those of you here is one, have you been on a cruise? And two, if you have, um, what, and maybe it's been more than one, what is your favorite place that you ever cruised? And maybe you've only been one place and that's your favorite place. Perfect. Uh, we have been on a couple cruises, we've been on Alaska. Uh, we cruised to Bermuda and then we also did the Eastern Caribbean uh, many, many years ago now. So uh, this one is the Norway Fjords. So uh, it is, the weather is not looking super, super hot there for sure. It's going to be quite cool, I think. Maybe a little bit like it was in Alaska. And so we're packing our puffy jackets and uh, some warm uh, weather clothing for sure. Well, warm clothing to keep us warm. <laughs> now one thing, that's what I was gonna ask you. Please, if this is your first time here and you are a crafter, Welcome, welcome. I'm so happy you found us. Um, please just share this. Follow the follow my page and share this. I send lots of tips and tricks and uh, hopefully we get a good community going here. And if you'd like even more, head on over to my, di my Design with Joe VI Peeps Facebook group and anybody can join in there and I'd love to have you join in too because we have contests and games and things like that over there as well as lots of new things. Okay, so I said it was on the front of the catalog. So this bundle is right here. So it's featured right here. This is the Cheerful Daisies. And I'm hoping you don't have too much of a glare. I have a plastic cover on my uh, catalog. And so here it's Lemon Lolly, Berry Burst, and it's got a little bit, I think that's Azure right there with uh, Blueberry Burst. And then if we find the entire collection, it's on page 110 and 115. Now, some folks have told me that the paper isn't necessarily up their alley. I actually have enjoyed working with the paper so far, but I do have to say I work with it a page at a time because I think that each one of these pages stands alone. And I'll go into those uh, some other day when we are crafting. We're not going to be using that today, but we are going to be using some designer paper. But there's a pretty good spread here of beautiful colors. It has all of the current in colors, again, which we're not going to be using. So the brand new in colors of Copper Clay, Wild Wheat, Boho Blue, Moody Mauve, and Pebbled Path. And there's a question up on my page today about which one do you think is my favorite? And I shared it over on my blog post. And yesterday's blog post was, let's compare the 2023-25 in colors. And what I do is I take uh, a little swatch and I show you a current other color, something that's in our current line, the current new in color, as well as a retired color. And I show you the differences between them or how similar they are. And with the idea that you might have either this current one or you might have this retired one. And it gives you an idea about whether you think you might like to pick up the new in color, whether it might fill a hole in your stash. So this is the stamp set. So let me just pull it in. So cheerful daisies. And uh, it's a two step stamp, meaning that we have some solid images and then we have some open line images, which you can both use together as your two step. I'm trying to not get any uh, glare on there. Or you can use them individually. 
and color them in if you wanted. Today I'm using a, a variety of different ones and I've done some of my stamping already because I want to get sort of to the technique and the technique that we're going to be doing is mostly working with heat embossing and I want to get to that in just a bit. So we're going to be using today, we're using this one, this one, we already will use these words, this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. So we have quite a few of the stamp sets that we're going to be, stamps that we're going to be using. And then these are the dies that coordinate with them. Now a tip for the Cheerful Daisies dies. The tip is I was finding it quite difficult to get this set back inside the outline. So this is the outline which you can use on this. Now it's not the same size because this one's just a little bit smaller, um, but it'll go around there. But I was finding when you use pull out this one that I didn't know where to put it back. So what I did is I did find it, but I didn't want to spend a ton of time doing that every single time I put the die back. So I just marked it with a blue Sharpie. Same with this one here, because this one also was a bit of a challenge. I just marked it on both sides so that I know that I can match up my two blue dots, if you want to call them that, so that I would send, save a little bit more time putting it in here. So just a time-saving tip for you there that I hope will make it a little easier if you happen to have these dies. So we're going to work with uh, the outline of the large, the outline of this small guy. We're gonna work with the leaf. We're gonna work with this leaf as well, and then the label. So there's lots of great things here, um, and I have already cut some of those out just to save us a little bit of time. So let's get started with the card. So it is a standard card that is five and a half by eight and a half, so you can see. Now, I thought I was using thick. This is regular, but I would recommend thick for you. And it scored at four and a quarter. Now, the thing about this that I did is I embossed this. Now, I think I pointed out that I was going to use this one. This is the small one right here. So I'm hoping that you can see that I put just clear uh, a Versamark and then my white embossing powder right over top of that. I'm hoping, I know it's sort of hard to see there just the way that light, let me move that light a little bit and see if I can get that a little bit better for you. So it is difficult to see but it's going to be super pretty when we uh, start to work with it. So we're going to be creating a one of my favorites and I, you know I, I don't know that I even realized it was one of my favorites until it was like, oh yeah, this is a favorite of mine. So we're going to create a peek through card. And in order to do that, I want a fairly large opening. And I could go with anything that would give me a large opening. So I could use punches, I could use dies, which is what we are going to use today. I could use the brand new dies, I could use the countryside corners, which we used last uh, week. But I wanted to pull in something that many of you already have, just to show you that it's great for this. I'm pulling in the scalloped contours, which has scallops on every single one of the dies. There's four, five nested dies here, and each one of them has a slightly different edge on it. So we're going to go with the one that is scalloped for cutting and then it has a dotted, uh, a dashed line around the rectangle itself. So I'm just going to pull that out. Now the important thing to do here is to open it up and then, because we don't want to go through the whole thing, and I'm going to pull in just a piece of our, um, this is just post-it note tape, and you want, when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you have enough uh, cardstock on whatever side you're going to cut. So if you cut here, don't bring it right out to the edge. That's not enough here to actually give it any kind of support. We need to have a little bit more. So I'm going to go this way this time and I'm going to give probably about three-eighths, maybe close to half an inch there, maybe more three-eighths. So just lay that down. I'm going to pull in my stamp and Cut and Emboss and we are going to cut that and I just about lost my plates. I've done that before. And then there's a, a loud crack and that's never good. So you're going to place that on there, use your full sandwich which means your your plate 
your base plate, your number one and two number threes. Let me see. Your base plate is number one, your plate which is number two, and then two number threes with your paper inside. Okay, and give that a cut through there. Now it will make some uh, loud noises like that and don't worry about that. That is just because it's an open, fairly open die. You find that if you have large open dies like that, then it will make that kind of noise. And you can start to sing along with that if you wanted. So just carefully pull that off. We are not going to be using this one today. So you're gonna save that for another card. And I'm gonna put my die back. We're done with our dies as well. Okay, so what we have is our opening here and we're gonna come in and do a little bit of work in the inside. But before we do that, I want to show you. So these might be a little easier to see only because they are larger. And again, I have stamped white on top of, um, I've stamped with Versamark and then I've put white embossing powder and I've just heated that up and it gives you uh, a sheen. I realize that's hard to see, but we will be able to see it uh, once we are, uh, once we're finished and once we're cut out. So let's do something that I haven't done for quite a while. And I don't think that many of you have done for a while either because I never hear of anybody talking about it. So what I have here is some of our heat and stick powder. Now the heat and stick powder is like embossing powder, but it's got a few little differences. So um, one of them is, is that it does not, um, it doesn't get shiny and you can't really see it once it's ready to go. So you have to be really careful when we're heating it up. And the other thing is that it's sticky. So, and it won't lose that stick until it has something on it. So we use it when we want to uh, put something on um, that we want to stay there. So let me just grab my Stampin' Pierce mat and I'm going to use my Versamark pad. I am going to use, and uh, it's gone, hold on a minute, my embossing buddy because I want which is here, I have an old one. You can get these now as part of the um, additions, the embossing additions toolkit. So I'm just gonna rub that over top of where I'm going to be stamping. So this is the inside of the big flower and this is the top of the little flower. So we're gonna stamp both of those and I'm sorry it's gonna be a little bit difficult for you to see. So just Versamark right over top and Versamark right over top here. I'm just gonna pull this down so I can see it a little bit more. And it's just going to give that really pretty little top to our flower. So now we're going to put on some of our heat and stick powder. And I just have a little piece of cardstock there, sprinkle it over, and it's going to look white. Can you see that? Okay, so it's going to stick to that Versamark quite well. I'm hoping that you can see that. Maybe you can. I'm hoping. Now, here's the tricky part. Okay, so let me move this out because I think some of you always have a little bit of a conniption in case I heat up that entire package. So this is where our heat tool that has two different settings comes in handy. So you want to heat that up, but you have to be really, really careful how you heat it up. So I think you can see that there's white sitting there it is going to almost disappear into the paper. And so when you do that, it's gonna disappear, but you have to stop immediately with your uh, heat. Because if you go a little bit too long, it actually will remove the stick. It'll sink completely into the paper. So what you wanna do is turn this on just to your number one, just because it's got a little less heat. It's still gonna heat up. I'm just gonna check it here. I'm hoping that if I do this, you're going to be able to, let me see, there, maybe you can see that. So I'm going to do this one first. So as soon as I see that change, there we go, done. Okay. So can you see how that just sort of sunk into the paper? Same with this one. As soon as I see it change, you want to be really, really quick here. So that one's changing. It's a little bit bigger. Can you see that? So it does look, turn this off. It does look a little bit shiny and that's what you want. 
But now what we want to do is we want to take our um, gilded gold gilded leafing. Let me just find the container to show you. So this is how it comes. I have had this since it came out two years ago. Still looks like I have a pretty full container. Uh, this will last you forever. Um, if you are going to get one, you might want to think even about sharing it with somebody. So I, every once in a while, I will refill my little container here. Now the thing with this is that you don't want any drafts in your workroom. You don't want to be huffing and puffing or sneezing and have a cold when you're working with this because it is so fine. So you can see how fine this is. And it is, it's so shiny and I love the shine of this gold. But a little goes a long way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my gold and I'm gonna put it right over top of those two spots on my daisies. And then I'm just gonna pat it on with my thumb and then sort of tap it off. It looks awful at this point, don't worry. Then we're going to do the same thing. It's a little bit big piece of paper, actually. Same thing on the other side. Now, when you have embossing like I do, you want to just be really careful because it is going to want to stick to that embossing. What you do want to do is try and keep that that's white embossing. You don't want it to be very warm. Okay, so give it a good press. Give it a flick. But I'm being very gentle. I'm trying not to breathe over top. And then bring in, what I found tends to work the best is to use a soft bristled brush. And it's one that is um, flat. Uh, so a square tipped one. This is an old one that I have. I didn't go out and buy one. You probably have one sitting around. But the idea is that it's soft and we're gonna burnish this. And so I'm just going to rub that lightly. I'm not pressing too hard. And what you're gonna be left with is just a little bit of that gold. Okay, so where those little dots were, that's where I'm gonna have gold. Same with this one. Same thing over here. This one I can tell is on just, uh, there was a little bit more glue, shall we say, with a little more stick. So when I use a soft brush, I find that it just makes it much shinier. It just keeps that shine and it doesn't harm it at all. So I'm just playing with that a little bit. But what you need, just keep sort of burnishing, moving it in a circle, and it's going to reward you with some beautiful bright gold. Okay, this guy here looks like it's coming off a little bit. I'm gonna see if I can give a little more. So I might have lost some of those dots there. Oh, that's better. So I'm gonna have a little bit more gold there. So you can, as you see, apply it a second time and just see if that will stick a little bit better. Get rid of this guy right there. Okay, so that's how you can get beautiful gold in there. And I'm hoping that you can see just how nice and bright, shiny that gold is. And I see Maggie saying that she's forgotten all about it. So there you go. Hopefully it will give you, if you have some, pull it out to you. So put your lid back on and put everything away with that because you don't want it to go crazy missing anywhere. Okay, so let's do some cutting out here. I've got the mini for this because I don't need to have the large. And for this one, I have my number one plate and I have my number two plate. And then I'm going to put in my piece. So I need to find my dies again which I've put somewhere, somewhere really close, but it's, oh, there they are. You know how you can lose things, but they're right in front of your face. Anybody else do that? I imagine you do, because it's not just me. So what I found, and again, it might be a little bit difficult for you to see this, but this, this flower has this little petal right here. It's sort of a short little fat petal. And again, that's hard for you to see. And so what I do is I try and find something that looks like that short little fat petal. And I think it's either this one right here or it's this one over here. So let's try this one first. Okay, so if I put that over top, nope. I'm hoping that you can see that. That is not the right one. So let's go for this guy over here. There we go. 
and that's the right one. So if I wanted to, I could put maybe a different color dot over there. And let me see, how about if I do that? Why don't I put a pink dot over there, or red, just because that's when I pulled out. And that is going to be my petal. And that's how I'm going to know that that's the easiest way. So I just put a teeny weeny little dot there using my Stampin' Blend. So let me just get this one set up and ready to go. Lay it down flat, get it lined up, and then put on that post-it note again. And then the other one I'm going to use is this one. This one's fairly easy to match up because it's not got that round look to it. So just pull that down a little and put on another piece of the post-it note tape. And then I'm gonna run those through after I put on my other little plate here. So run those through. Hold on to the top of your mini. Your mini does not have nearly the weight of the big one, but it works great if you are going to a, a stamping event, let's say. So let's pull that. I am going to, am I gonna need that? No, I don't think I'm going to. So we'll put that away. So then what we have is our flower here. I'm hoping that you can see. And then you'll be able to see these a little bit better once we get them onto some color. Okay, so what we've got so far then, we have our card. I want to show you the paper that we're going to use. So the designer series paper that I've pulled in is called Bright and Beautiful, and this is the call number for it. Now one thing that's really fantastic about this paper is it has not, it doesn't even have every single one, but it has 10 of our brand new core colors. So let's just look at some of them here. So we have Berry Burst, and I'll do one side first. This one you can see Lemon Lolly, and we have Lemon Lime Twist, Pretty Peacock, As Your Afternoon. Let's see it here. This one here is our Blueberry Bushel and our Berry Burst. So this is great for celebrating. This is our Berry Burst and probably Misty Moonlight in there too. Here's a fun one. Let's turn it around this way. So we've got all kinds of colors in there. Lost the Lagoon, which I haven't talked about yet. Um, I think every other one I've talked about. Here's Lemon Lime Twist. That's sort of fun. This one here, again, has all of those colors and it has them in different tones, so they're lighter and darker. So it's not like you have just one intensity of color. Here's some great big dots for them and there's some little dots. So Fresh Freesia is in here as well. This one is a really pretty one, sort of an ombre mixed one and they're little triangles all in different colors. And then a mix of Bubble Bath and Berry Burst and then our Lemon Lolly. And what I like about this one is that it has nice bold colors on the back too. So where those ones are a little bit less intense, these ones are a little bit darker, a little bit brighter. Don't you love that Lemon Lime Twist? There's Pretty Peacock. That's Lost Lagoon. This is our Mo Misty Moonlight, As Your Afternoon, Blueberry Bushel, and then again, a mix of all of our colors. So if you want to test drive any of these new colors and you're not too sure about them, then I would recommend getting this particular package of paper. Again, it's called Bright and Beautiful. There's the call number. And you get four of each sheet, so there's 48 sheets in here. And this will take you a long way. So just to show you all of those colors, here are all of the colors that coordinate with this paper. Plus your white, of course. And I'll bet that you could get even more colors because a lot of these ones have intense and then a little bit lighter colors in there. So it's great. So what we are working with today is the bubble bath. We're gonna go with the bubble bath. And I have taken the paper and I just wanna show you how I've cut it. So the piece of paper that we need let me see, it's up here. The piece of paper that we need is just our regular four by five and a quarter. So I cut off the top because this was so light and I'll use that for something else. What I'll probably end up doing is I'll end up using it for this. 
I'm going to let you guys pick. So, um, and then so I cut off this because that's a good size to use as well. And this has an ombre look to it. So it starts lighter and gets a little bit darker, a little bit darker. It's like someone took a paintbrush and made it just a little bit darker. So which side do we want to use for this? Do we want to use that side or do we want to use the dots? And I'm going to put it inside here like this. Nope, I'm going to put it inside here like this so that we have the color variation happening or I'm going to put it like this and I'm going to let you decide. So whatever I see the most of um, is what I'm going to see. And you know what? Ombre is winning. Okay, I think you know what for this card too, I'm agreeing with you guys only because it's such a soft card and we have a lot of white. So I'm just using our stamp and seal, putting that all the way around. I'm making sure that I'm putting this variation where we're going to see the lighter color here coming across. Open that up, place that in the middle as much as possible. How many people make peek through cards very often? And then what I've done is I've just taken a piece of bubble bath and this is two by three and three quarters and just plain white, which is one and three quarter by three and a half. And that is going to go over here and that's where you're going to do your writing. So let's just use a little bit of glue for that guy. I find I do use glue most of the time, especially when I'm putting on cardstock. When I'm putting on designer paper or even some of our regular white, because it's a little bit thinner, I don't always uh, use glue. As you saw, I just use the seal. And that's because you can sometimes see that glue through. So I'm going to come over here and try and give it the same amount at the top, the bottom and the sides all the way around. So I have a little bit of time to get that set up. So that's the inside. Now what we're going to do is we are going to do some stamping right on here. So I've got my branch. Oh, don't need the words, but I've got my branch and I have my bubble bath. So we're going to stamp that first. Now what's great about when you have a photopolymer stamp like this is that you can form it into wherever you want it to go. So if I want to have my flowers bend this way, which I think I do, then I'm going to place this on my block so that it's going to go that way. Okay, so if I want it to go this way, form it here with your hands and then that's how I need to have it go. So even if I put it on with my block, I'm now going to give it just a little bit of a curve. And that's what's great about photopolymers. They give you a little bit more life to your stamps because you can do that with them. So I've got my bubble bath here and I am going to stamp right over top. Okay, so it's a little bit darker than some of that white. It's a great little branch. And off camera, I will clean these a little bit later. Now I can bring in, because I, I wanted to keep it a secret what kind of paper, what color paper we were using. But I have already cut out one of our labels and I want a white one. Put that guy over there for right now. And I have a pink one cut out as well. And I have a leaf which is going to probably go on there. And then I have one of our, I don't know, what would you call that? A frond? I have a frond also in our pink. So it's going to go somewhere there. Our flowers are probably going to go here. I think I need to have these over here. And it's okay if that goes outside or outside of just the scallops and then we're going to probably put our leaf maybe up here okay so that's going to be our placement before we get to that i want to stamp my your friendship means everything in my bubble gum and i just want to get this nice and straight if i can hopefully i won't get my head right in your view there we go Okay, so let's put some dimensionals on the back of here. And I have some uh, that I need to use up from around the outside edges of my dimensionals. And I hope that you all do this. 
because it is a great way to get a little bit more life from them. And I'm going to put all the way, let's put the, oh, that's a big one, all the way around. Okay, now what are we going to do with this guy? We're going to cut this in half. So we're going to get a little bit more out of this too just by making there isn't a nested die that's exactly one size bigger than this so we're going to make our own so let's take these guys we're going to add a little bit of glue to this part right here and then we are going to place this move that guy out of the way we're going to place this right over top so I'm going, I'm using my silicone craft sheet here because I want to make sure that if I get any glue anywhere, it's going to stick here and not onto my work surface. So I've got, oop, didn't let it dry enough. We will try that again. So you can see that I have my pink right there, very, very little border. And then I'm going to do the same thing turn this around on the other side so when I'm doing this let me show you here what works great on this one is that there are stitching lines so I can line up the stitching lines here with the stitching lines there so that I am getting it straight I can't do that when it's in my hands but I can do that when it's down here and then I'm sort of also looking at the stitching lines up here and looking for the same amount of space that way I am going to be getting this, the complete going all the way around you won't have it happen here and here but that's okay so you're going to have a nicely matted label and I'm gonna put some dimensionals on the back of that one we'll do that and we'll do that and let's do that guy right there okay so let's put a few things together I do have a dimensional on the back of that guy we're gonna start with Oops, we're going to start with this guy. Now, had I been thinking ahead, I would have put um, adhesive sheets on the back of this, but I didn't. So I am just going to put a tiny little dab, and I'll hold this up after I'm done. So this, it does require a little bit of uh, control over your hand to do this. And I do also have uh, one of these guys here and sometimes I forget to use it so this has a nice fine tip on it that I'm able to get it to go out really oops shouldn't you know you when you talk sometimes you shouldn't and then I'm gonna lift this up and I'm going to place it down right over here so I want to be able to see this behind my flowers we're gonna place the big guy first just remove the backings. How many people have already picked up this bundle or this, um, this collection? Now decide what part you like best. Decide if you think it looks better one way or the other. I, for some reason, I actually think I like it better with this little square, not square one, that little fat little one over here. So I'm going to place this. Oh, I should, probably should have put that up. Well, it's going to go down further, I guess. It's going to go here so I can just see it peeking out and then we're going to put this guy on top and if you can't get the backings off your dimensionals just use your um, take your pick to do that I've lost my leaf there it is so this is a very pretty card this pink is um, is a very very pretty pink I really uh, I really like it it's one of my the nicest pinks I think that I've seen in the last little while and we're gonna put on our words as well and I of course have a sample here to show you with different colors so you can decide if you really like the soft colors or if you like something a little bit more bold I'm gonna take this guy here I think we're, I'm lining it up sort of straight with there, I hope. Well, actually, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to try and line this up between these two areas, okay, so that I have the same amount on both sides. Very similar, anyway. Okay, so there's our card. Now, I do have a little ribbon or a little bow here, I guess, which is out of the linen thread. And I think I am going to put that on. It just sort of finishes it off. So to do that, I'm going to create a little booger, a little 
mini glue dot booger. So I'm going to lift it off with my finger and then I'm going to roll it around a little bit until it turns into a little booger. And then I'm going to put that down. What else would you call that? What is, you know, it's not a technical term by any stretch, but what else would you call that? And I'm just going to trim off these. Well, that one I'm not going to, this one right there. Okay, so there's that. Now there's one other thing that we might want to put on here. And I just got these in my last order. And I love these. I These are so wonderful. These are adhesive backed sparkle gems, which are in the new catalog. They're not attached to any collection, but these are uh, I, I like I said I love them so there's a real silvery one there's a black grayish kind of one and then there's a champagne gold kind of one so I think maybe one to give us three little bits of gold I'm going to use one of the large gold guys and I am just going to put it I think maybe well, we put it just right over here. So it's going to create a bit of a triangle that way. We could put it there, but I think it's too close to the bow. So let's just, let's put it up there. Okay, so I want to show you just how sparkly they really, really are very sparkly. Okay, so there's our card. So just a really pretty, and I'm seeing the word dainty. That's folks are using the word dainty. Now let's put, pull in one that's a little bit darker. So this is Pretty Peacock on a Lost Lagoon background. So this Lost Lagoon is lighter and then has darker. So on this one I could have done the same thing. I could have used Berry Burst, but I wanted to stay with the really soft colors on this one. And of course, you know, I used both uh, both openings, the left and the right. So let me know which one is your favorite and um, we will see what everybody says. So which one is your favorite? And um, we will see what everybody says. So again, thank you very much. Please, if you've watched this right to the end, please consider uh, liking it and following the page, sharing it with other people so that they can come and uh, have some fun with us too. 